What's up, Fearless Nation? Here to talk about what does it take to win a fight at a professional level especially. You always hear the cliche, styles make fights, which is true to a point. But I always say, more than styles, it's the determination of each fighter. There's only so much you can do with your hands, you know. This isn't UFC or MMA where you can do the ground and pound and wrestle and do all types of martial arts. Um, you know, boxing, you're limited. So there's only much you can do with your fists and defense. So it comes down to heart. It comes down to your, your mind. And even your boxing IQ, you know, that's great. But you can have a more skillful fighter lose to a guy with more determination. The one thing you need to win any professional fight, I'm not talking about a street fight, but it might apply there too, is you have to impose your will. Whatever your opponent's game plan is, you impose your will. He forgets what his game plan is and starts fighting it. What you, he starts doing what you want him to do. He throws his game plan out the window and starts fighting your fight. That's imposing your will. And not too many people know how to do that. But all the greats knew how to do it. And even if they had an off night, at the beginning of a fight, they adapt and they come back in the next, you know, next couple rounds. If they lost a round, they come back in the next round. They adapt and impose their will until their opponent succumbs. Imposing your will, kind of like Tom Brady in the Tampa Bay Bucks did to the Kansas City Chiefs. They imposed their will, made them quit. I saw a play where three guys hit Mahomes at once. I was like, man, I like my homes, but goodness. <laughs> so you have to impose your will. And, you know, not just in boxing, but with um, any, is my uh, bandana? Yeah, you got to have it. Yeah, there we go. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you got to impose your will. And with anything, tennis, soccer, but boxing more than any other sport, because it's one-on-one, -on -one, you're limited in what you can do. You just have two fists. You can't kick. You can't do anything else. Oh, by the way, I've been wondering, um, in UFC, how come um, they wear uh, gloves on their hands and not on their feet since they kick, you know? Just always wonder that. And I also think that's why boxing is more appealing than uh, the UFC and MMA. Strange reason, but I think it's because they wear shoes. Makes it look a little more civilized than guys walking barefoot through an octagon. That's just me, though. Anyway, you got to impose your will. You got to impose your will on your opponent. You may have to do it in life, you know. But check out all the greats. If someone's coming on strong and um, there's a certain game plan and it's hard to adjust, you got to dig deep. And impose your will. All the great fighters knew how to do that. And while I'm on boxing, I forgot to mention when I was talking about Mark Breland the other night going in on Deontay Wilder and Deontay responding, trying to go in on him. Breland said he could beat Deontay Wilder. I think he said with just a jab. He said he could beat Anthony Joshua too. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking... Does he mean now or, you know, or if he was a heavyweight, you know, but, you know, obviously to me, he would have to be a heavyweight, but um, I could see him beating Deontay if he was a heavyweight. Uh, Joshua would be a, a bigger problem. I don't see him beating Tyson Fury at all. Um, I don't see him beating Andy Ruiz. I don't see him beating uh, Joe Joyce. And Joshua was just too strong for him. But anyway, that's kind of off topic. My topic was knowing how to impose your will on your opponent. And strategy is one thing. You can have all the strategy in the world. And I hate to use the cliche that everybody takes from Mike Tyson that everybody has a plan until they get hit, you know. But uh, that's what, if you go back and look at Mike Tyson's fights, you know, that he won, of course. He just overwhelmed his opponent. He just came in and stopped them before they could even get something started. He just imposed his will. And 
you know, you could see it even before the bell sounded on some uh, the bell rang for some of the opponents. They just looked shook from the opening bell. So, yeah, George Foreman had that. Sonny Liston had it. Um, David Tua had it. Ike Bayabuchi had it. Man, I wonder what happened to his career. That guy was something ferocious. He would have been a problem in any era. Any era. Um, Lennox Lewis knew how to do it. Um, Roy Jones, you know, his early career. Um, yeah. Impose your will on your opponent. You know, imposing your will also includes intimidation before the fight. You know, you got to look the part. How are you going to impose your will on your opponent if you don't look the part? And some will say, well, remember Andy Ruiz in the first fight? He didn't look the part, and he imposed his will on Joshua. Yeah, there's an exception to the rule, but uh, he wasn't able to do it in the rematch. I think that was more a thing of uh, what was wrong with Joshua that night, even though I'm not trying to take anything away from Andy Ruiz. Definitely a tough guy. Comes from near my neck of the woods, uh, San Diego, California. But, uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think. Put a fist to the like button, comment, share, subscribe. Please be fearless. That's, that's all I'm asking. Yay, yay.